We're local recording, and we are local audio, are we? Yeah, we are. Oh, stereo, not mono. All right. Mm. We're recording both. Here we go. Let's kick it off white guy style. You ready? Yo, homie. Okay, here we go. It begins. Better pull that over here. All right, TMSPM is what we're looking for. There we go. It begins in three, two, one. Tonight on TMSPM, you won't believe the maps we have to talk about. Florida mom in big trouble for being too vegan. The, uh, uh, sorry, the awesome new HBO show, The Leftovers. Speaking of Sarah Jessica Parker, she's coming back to TV to solve crime. You're great. <laughs> she's got to get Mendoza. Uh, Facebook does not have a teen problem. Help, I can't get the Iron Throne in my house. Your Twitter questions and a visit from Hakito on this episode of The Morning Stream PM. This is the morning stream, but it's not in the morning, it's at night, p.m. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to a little thing we call the morning stream p.m., Thursday edition. You may have mm-hmm. noticed there was no regular Thursday edition. No. Nope. It's because I warned you. I told you if you're as big a fan as you say you are, you listened to the show yesterday and you heard me say <laughs> you it. You know. <laughs> you know why. There was a planned outage of internet time here at the house, and it was going to be because of some construction happening across the road. Here's the best part. You ready? Here's the best part, Brian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. supposed to go like an hour and a half, something like that. Mm-hmm. 20 minutes. That's it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 20 after 8, it, it ended, and I went, oh, I could have probably still done a show. We could have probably just oh. pushed 20 minutes. Right. But I had already well, gotten. Nice in, they would have told you. Yeah, like, exactly. Yes, it'll be. Yeah. Well, I'm torn. Part of me wants to complain that mm-hmm. they told me the wrong one, but part of me wants to rejoice that it that it was shorter, and that they actually, you know, uh, what's the word? They over delivered, under under promised and over delivered. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. That's what you want. That's right? what I want. If I was any yeah. other internet user, that would have been awesome. But as a guy who postponed an entire morning of programming because of it, well, that's you know, it's a different animal. It is, yeah. the the uh, The cable guy never says, "Hey, I'll be there between eight and 12, and then shows up at eight oh one. No, the no, rarely, rarely. Right, right. And if that I ever guess, happens, that's what kind of happened today. To, that's going to happen at one house. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had it happen. I've had a guy be about uh, maybe twenty five minutes after the, the the first time in the in the uh-huh. sandwich of one to twelve, but never <laughs> at right at one. Window? Yeah, uh-huh. or not one to twelve. That'd be a thirteen hour day. Uh, I guess. 12 to 1 whatever it doesn't matter the point is we're back we're here we're doing it it's a show it's thursday june 26 2014 i'm scott that's brian and uh yes. it's a show it's a it's a chilled show you know it's a tms pm it's how we, we kind of right. chill out a little that's bit right. smoking jacket i've got yeah. uh, a candle here in the background that i can't get my all right log- can i complain about of course logitech you can. For a absolutely second? you can i've got two logitech cameras sitting on top of my monitor because I don't want to use the FaceTime camera for this. It's a little too washed out. The resolution's not not as yeah. good as I they, think is the logic. They function cameras. for chatting chatting with your grandparents, but they suck Perfect for anything for else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I and I would normally say I feel like I've got more control with the Logitech cameras. And for the most part I do. I can move it over here, I can move it over there, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the cheapo low resolution Logitech camera um, swivels on its base. So you put the little base on the top of the monitor and you can turn the camera left and right and it goes all great. Yeah. The high resolution, way more expensive Logitech camera that uh, Brian Dunaway suggested you and I pick up. Yeah, which we do. I have one too right up there. Yep. Flops down, has a little flippy floppy thing that goes on the back of your monitor, keep it stabilized. Yep. But they don't have any pivot. There's no pivot. No. Nope. So it's like it is locked into looking straight ahead. Cannot turn my head for anything. Yeah, it's got two mo. It's got two. Well, actually, it has no range of. I guess it has up and down yeah. range of access. That's it. Yeah, up and down is nice, and then you want up and down too. Sure. But uh, sure. I want side to side. You I want, want to be able side to, say, to side. I want in and out. I want everything. <laughs> Wait, what? What did I say? I didn't mean what, that. What? 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 <laughs> um, yeah, I mean it's great quality yeah. though, right? We don't have mm-hmm. that to complain about. It's fantastic quality. Yeah. I think so. I mean, best best webcam I ever had. This is really really down a strange rabbit hole that we've gone, but yeah. I've gone. All right, let's go down. Let's keep going. I like it. With me. Yeah. Was the um, the old Apple uh, FireWire camera? I can't remember the iSight. No, the the, the, the can, iSight. right? The little can looking thing. It looked like a can. Yep. And um, that thing had it came with a bunch of different uh, 
connectors that you could use to put it on your monitor, on your desk, on your yeah. on the wall, whatever. I remember that. And it went every possible direction you could possibly want that thing to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it turned. It had a little um, 360 degree pivot thing in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. I had yeah. that as well, and I don't know where it is now, but it is. You're right. It was FireWire. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the big reason it's somewhere in a box. Yeah, <laughs> for me, the new the new Macs and the new uh, yeah. I don't know. You get it. You can uh, configure a PC with it, of course, but it's sure. they're they've kind of gone the way of USB 3.0s here to stay, kind of. So mm -hmm. I don't know what you're gonna. How, there's not a good argument that uh, FireWire should continue. It's kind of big, unwieldy, expensive, right. and obsolete in terms of speed. Even the 800. So sure, sure. what's the point? Right. All right, check anyway, this out, man. Check this your out. Tech talk with. Scott and Brian. That's right. We'll do more of that next Wednesday with Tom. No, we won't because he'll be on his way here and so will you. Mm -hmm. So and forget so that. I. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone will be on their way here. Uh, Maybe we'll all just have a call, a phone call while I'm driving through Green River. Hey, guys, let's talk about It's that. actually right about now, about 5.30 our time, 5.34. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just this about just about marks the exact seven, uh, seven days from now time that everybody will be getting ready for the meet and greet. And the hangout on Thursday oh, night. Oh, really? Right, because we have a reception on Thursday night. Yep, yep. They kind of cool. just walk around, and say hi to everybody, you know that stuff. So, Nerdtacular, an eminent threat, will be here in one <laughs> Earth week. One Earth week. Wow. Very excited. All right, we got some stuff today. Eric Van Skyhawk joining us later. Yay! We'll talk about nap and uh, hang out, do a little, little uh, Twitter time with him. That'll be fun. Cool. Like having him on here once in a while. He is not able to attend. He's got some a whole bunch of shoots for his uh, Nickelodeon job, so he can't right. come to Nerdtacular. It's two sad. years in a row we haven't had. Uh... No, we had him last year. He was there last year. Was you know? he? Yeah. I don't think he was. Oh yeah, it totally was because he got stuck down in Salt Lake with the first. Uh, oh rock right. Slide. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's right. He was trapped down in the valley. Year, right. year before that, he didn't. Year before that, he did. That's that's what it was. Yeah. It's kind of so an every other an year kind of guy. Yeah. 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 Let's yeah. see. I see how we. I see how we rate. Pick a side, you he bastard. Likes he likes us fifty percent. Yeah. <laughs> Halfway kind of guy. All right. So I would like to encourage you all to check out patreoncom slash TMS. Why? Because this fifth episode a week, although it's just four this week because of circumstances this morning, but it's the extra episode you wouldn't have normally uh, because of that uh, that level we cracked where every, you know we do it, an extra show. Now, one of the levels I would like to recommend for new listeners to the show who haven't yet supported us on Patreon, you're thinking, well, I don't want to just give you a dollar a month because that seems low. I'd like to give you more than that or something more meaningful. How about the $30 level? Tons of content, 30 bucks, and you not only get our undying love and get on the awesome people list, but it also gets you MP3s and a 4x6 print every month. You also receive a monthly shipment of a 12-ounce bag of the Morning Brew, our custom-blended Honduran coffee. Woo! Yeah. And the first month of your uh, pledge, they'll send you a TMS mug to drink it from. So you get a free mug out of the deal, man. You will need to do a little bit of work between getting the beans out of the bag yeah. and pouring coffee in the mug. Right. That we leave up to you. Yeah, you make that the way you want. We're not going to be your, what's the guy <laughs> in the place? Bari we're not going to be your barista. Juan Valdez? Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not going to be your Juan Valdez. Fine. Or his ass. Actually, we are the Juan Valdez. We're just not the barista. You right. had it right. I yeah. had it wrong. We went yeah. to we went to Honduras with our Dave donkey. Michael really is our Juan Valdez. Yeah, we send him is. there with the donkey and yep, got the big mustache. Pick, and, picked his beans and yep, puts them on his ass and leaves. And then went and found some coffee. That's right. <laughs> so uh, participate, won't you, in that? That'd be great. Go check it out. patreoncom TMS. Okay, we like to start the show off with some stuff, and usually it's a story or some weird thing that happened to one of us or something. But today, it's these maps I found that I thought you would like. Because um, for once, it's not a top 10 things you won't believe about Brad Pitt's eyebrows or something dumb like that. Right. This is actually has some science behind it. It's 10 maps that show how much time Americans spend grooming, eating, thinking, and praying. Now, that is not a Julia Roberts movie, grooming, <laughs> eating, thinking, praying. It's Habits of Americans. Right. All right. So here's what they say at the top of the thing. The American Time Use Survey is a treasure trove of data for understanding how Americans spend their days. The survey is essentially a uh, nationally a national diary of how we work, pray, sleep, play, and even groom ourselves. The data can be passed at the state level too. Below are 10 maps showing the sometimes surprising regional variation of American time use. So it's kind of like, well, what do Americans do with their time? That's really the bottom line of this thing. Sure. And uh, we're going to look at, you know, a little Utah, a little Colorado, but also the rest of the union. There's not like a, you know paying attention to whatever Kim Kardashian and uh, Kanye West are doing? No, like, I don't think there's a... How much a, time per day the average American does that? No, but um, 
good friend of the program, John Strickland, How sent... about eating deep fried food? Is yeah. that... <laughs> yeah, that might be all South. Uh, John Strickland sent us a link uh, the other day or sent me a link that showed real time lightning strikes. Oh, yeah, you forwarded that over to me. So I was thinking, cool. I was thinking, oh, that's going to be all right, great. I'll look at it. And I was mesmerized by that thing for like uh, half an hour. I was hour. too. I was too. And I kept checking was... the European one and I'm like, Bzz. Bzz, nothing hardly <laughs> nothing i go to like the e asian countries and the oceanic ones nothing nothing right. going on hardly go back to america we are zeus is pissed at us dude no kidding he is trying to wipe us off the face it's crazy here. the only thing i can think of is maybe we're the only ones with satellite tracking and so we don't have as much data in the other places maybe or something because well, i can't I mean, imagine it being that different and here's the thing because i was looking at that looking at like the how and the why of that map and what what makes it tick um i don't think it's getting it from NORAD and and the National Center for Atmospheric Research, which is actually up here in Boulder. Yeah. I think it's getting it from um, people who create this little device, this little USB reporting device that's hooked up to their computer. Uh -huh. Like it's this thing called the Blitzer Tongue. Blitzer Tongue. Blitzer Tongue. Sure. Blitzer Tongue. Yeah. And you can cover your area with one of these little devices that you that you uh, build. Wow. So you can you can help by. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. Yes. It's so it, I want to find the site again. I meant to give it to the chat. Uh, here, I'm putting it in the chat right okay. now. Because you guys, yeah. it's just weird. Oh, Although, wait, did you? Yeah, I gave him the right page. You're going to want to mute the, there's a sound <laughs> yes. that happens. Yeah. Super On the annoying. left side, you'll see a little check boxes for strikes, detectors, and sound. Just uncheck that sound yeah. box and you'll... Uh, but it does feel ooh, like you're awesome. playing, it's like you expect uh, a voice to, to tell Matthew Broderick and ask him if he wants to play a game. <laughs> Because it's very I'm, like war games. It's really cool. I'm running out of missiles in one of my three bases That's at the right. bottom of this map. <laughs> so check this out. First map up. And you want to be looking at these visually here. I'm pulling up the the, the uh, other maps. The, right, the So here are these numbers. And none of these are perfect. It's just an interesting kind of broad subsection of kind of what some of this data is. I love metadata. I think it's one of my favorite things in the world. Mm -hmm. sure. I love when we can pull out the camera and go, what's really going on here? What do the numbers say? Because talking heads will say one thing. But what's really going on, you know? So average this daily... beautiful house. <laughs> this is not my beautiful car. Average daily sleep is... Okay. Uh, they've got the, the, the range between 8 hours and 25 minutes and 9 hours and 8 minutes. That's kind of the range of the average. Just look at... I mean, Colorado's a little behind us, but look at Utah. Like Mississippi... Wow, you get the least... Like you and Wisconsin get the least amount of sleep. Well, yeah, we wake we wake up, man, early to... I mean, that was... I, you want, Here's the truth. I believe culturally when I was a kid, this was pounded into me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not kidding. Like there was really... A, there was actually a thing where it was like, it doesn't matter whether you have anything going on. Get up. We're doing chores. Or we're going to go clean the yard. Or we're going to mow the lawn. Or we're going to... You know, everybody up. Everybody up. That was, that was pounded into me. Now, whether that's indicative of other Utah experiences, I don't know. But for me, it was get the hell out of bed. Right. Uh, Alabama and Mississippi are the nation's sleepiest capitals, uh, sleep capitals. They all do nine plus hours each. I think it's because it's hot as hell down there, mm -hmm. and you just need to sleep it off. So I think that's what's going on there. Here, can I say what what surprises me? Sure. Is that in the average, like eight and a half hours of sleep is the low end of the average? Yeah, isn't that crazy? <laughs> that is crazy. They say I... that's because up top they explain it. They say they think that that number is skewed higher because. The, this thing included anyone 15 years and up and anyone between 15 and 18 has an average of 10 or more. So not everyone, but a lot of teenagers need 10 or more. And there is science that supports the idea that they need more sleep and get more sleep on average than adults do. So right. because they're in there, they have Ross Perot the number up. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that makes can, sense. Not much you can do about that. All right. Average daily time spent grooming. Brian, for Brian, it's like five seconds because he it got really that. It really is. Yeah. yeah with the... With, uh... <laughs> Don't need to shampoo. No, nope. I don't shave as often as I probably should. The uh, the dark states in here. Vermont is an outlier. Vermontians, uh, Vermonteers, they're called. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Twenty eight daily minutes of grooming is uh, is a full ten minutes fewer than the fifty state average, and seventeen minutes fewer than the forty five minutes people spend in Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, and South Carolina. Again, in general, southern states more right. time spending on grooming. That yeah, flies in the map, face of it, doesn't it? It totally does. When you look at this map, it is. From north to south, almost like a, a, a perfect gradient. And I like have the northern states less time grooming, 
southern states more time, except for New York. <laughs> yeah, except for New York. And look at uh, Hawaii. They ain't doing crap in Hawaii. Not Hawaii, Alaska. Alaska's uh, Alaska, just sitting yeah. on their ass. Well, I mean, you know. Here's you, what I think. I have <laughs> eight layers of down jackets. You don't need to worry about deodorant. Do, 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 do. <laughs> here's, what I, here's my theory, though. The reason the yeah. South is like that is because it's so humid and gross all the time mm. that you're taking more showers you're washing your face and your hands and your everything sure. more because it's just sticky and horrible down there. That's yep, what that's, I think is going that's on. That's a perfect uh, explanation for yeah. that. I'm, now, I agree to that theory. Uh, New York and New Jersey spend the most time commuting. That makes sense. That doesn't surprise me in the least. Mm. Although, Cal- you, you would have thought maybe California. I would have thought California would be at the darkest end of that spectrum. I mean, there's probably a lot of virtual mm-hmm. companies mm-hmm. now in California, but uh, even if you work... Uh, three miles from your house in California. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it seems like you should have a 45 minute drive to get there. <laughs> Absolutely. I would have totally guessed that, but look at Colorado. You're the same color as California. You're, about, you're darker yeah. than Texas. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you put your cursor, oh, bummer. I was hoping that when you put your mouse over uh, a state, it would tell you what the, the like numbers. Is. Yeah. That'd yeah. be cool. Um, yeah. But New York, man, lots of time commuting in yeah. New Jersey. Lots Portland, of time they're just sitting on their butt. That's almost white. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jeez, uh, Oregon, what are you doing up there? Right, North Dakota, North South Dakota. Dakota. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. North Dakota employees work the longest days, don't you know? Hmm. Uh, so you look at that North Dakota. Look how dark that is. That in Mississippi, they work the longest days, the highest well, you know, of eight you gotta, hours. Got to spend a lot of time putting that undercoating on. <laughs> I tell you what, Mister Lundergaard, heck, do you mean? <laughs> Average daily time spent on housework. This one's interesting. Okay. Um, this goes to high plains states. They keep the tidiest houses. So states like, what's the one above Idaho and Wyoming? Uh, Montana. Montana. Jeez. <laughs> Montana. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, Wyoming, <laughs> I don't think Wyoming, they must not have any data because it's, uh, it's, great it's gray. Yeah. Like that's not even the same color scheme, is it? No, they so don't explain maybe, it either. maybe Wyoming just does not do anything for their house. They yeah, just, I guess not. <laughs> nope, we don't spend any time cleaning our house. Sorry. <laughs> so here's my favorite one that seems really obvious. Average daily time spent on religious activities, right. two minutes to yeah. 17 minutes. The South is riddled with it. Just boom, 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 boom. And right. then light gray everywhere. And then Utah. <laughs> boom. Right there in the middle of everything. Look at that thing. Uh, California. As dark as Georgia and <laughs> Texas is Utah. Yeah. Arizona is lighter than I expected. Um, mm, I just mm. knowing a lot of people in Arizona that are super hardcore religious, I was surprised right. about that. That's just Phoenix, though, so who knows? Um, but yeah, I'm not surprised well, that about that. also a lot higher than, like, it's, it's there. It's one of the lightest colored uh, uh, spots on the map. Yeah, you, you, guys, know, it's, you guys are just waking up on Sunday and peeing on a picture of Jesus every morning. <laughs> That's basically it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> that Utah thing is pretty funny. Um, yeah. Let's see. Average daily. There's another Utah one. It's right. weird how Utah keeps sticking out in weird ways. It really does. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. Average time spent on leisure activities. Shortest being four hours, four, 27 minutes. Longest being six hours, eight minutes. Utah's the brightest point in the joint. <laughs> <laughs> Industrious Utah residents report spending only four hours and 27 minutes in leisure day activities. Contrast with, with the wild and wonderful West Virginia, where people spend over six hours a day engaged in crack, I'm sorry, leisure activities. I almost said crack smoking. <laughs> in addition, high desert states, Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming report less leisure time than everyone else. So you're in the grouping. Yeah. Um, that's really weird to me because we've got skiing, we've got... Mm-hmm. It's not like a place where you. There's not. We're not lack of things to do. Right. We're also right. supposed to be the the video game capital of the world, but that data skewed because there's just so many kids here, and a lot of kids play video what games. They, so what do they? And they don't really define what what really makes leisure activities. No. Like, um, no. That would be interesting, right? Yeah. I mean, is it outdoor? A lot of people would would consider you know hiking and biking and running and stuff like that. Not necessarily leisure activity. More like uh, watching TV, reading a book. Um, well, how about these? You're so funny. You just said book and TV because they're exactly in this next order. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Average daily time spending watch uh, spent watching TV. Mm-hmm. Utah and Wyoming, what, way up there. So pale you can't even see them. You barely can see them. Um, I want to say Colorado's pretty close, though. Idaho, pretty close. Pretty close. Yep. So we do a lot of TV there, uh, you know, of those leisure activities, in other words. Mm-hmm. So we have the least amount of leisure time but we are filling in a big chunk of it with TV. Um, <laughs> no, no, that's less TV. That's what I'm saying. You guys are in the bottom. bottom oh, 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 I see. 
Oh, yeah. you're right. You're right. More TV in the yeah. dark states. No leisure time and no TV watching during oh, that leisure time. I had that I had the other way. Okay. All right. The other one. And we always had limits as kids. Two hours. That's all you get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Average daily time spent reading. 13 minutes on the low, 29 on the high. Uh, you're a little darker than us. You're reading more than we are. But we're not mm -hmm. the lightest. The lightest is... Hmm. Hold on a second. <laughs> Compare that to the TV. Ooh. Or the religious activities. Uh, boy, the well, South. Reading, does reading count as the Bible? Then we might have something darker there. Because <laughs> Texas and all the southern states, it, yeah. on this map, it looks like someone nuked half the country out. <laughs> Nobody's reading down there. Average time spent thinking and relaxing. We're average. The thinking and relaxing <laughs> goes real you dark. Get a poll. All right. Let's see. You get a poll that says, How much time per day do you spend thinking and relaxing? Would you be able to answer that? Well, I, I think I would say, apparently, if you live in Alaska, Wyoming, what's the one next? To, oh, the North, North Dakota. Dakota. Yeah. Apparently, you have nothing but time to sit and relax. So, yeah. Because <laughs> you're, you're to too busy thinking and relaxing. You can't even answer the question. <laughs> anyway, it's really interesting. Now, they have some data table stuff. So, this would help you down here a little bit. Like, the sleeping, the grooming, the housework, mm -hmm. and showing you what order all this stuff goes in. So in Colorado, there's specific numbers, mm -hmm. uh, 38 minutes, okay. house, you know, and so on. See, this thing's much, yeah. there's a lot more here than it's just what I'm reading. Once you get to the bottom, but yeah. I love this stuff. I mean, I, the people at home are like, this is boring as hell. Why are you, why are y'all reading this? Well, it's because <laughs> it's interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah, I like it. Did we, I didn't put a copy of the link in the... Uh, Hey, stick it in there. For the folks. Yeah, here you go. People. Stick it in your chat room. Here you go, people. Here's a link. Let's do, uh, let's do a little bit of this right here. Radio today is different. Powerful networks span the nation from coast to coast. Shortwave radio girdles the globe. It's the evening news brought to you by... The Nerdtacular coin set by Fantasy Coin. Two coins with NT14 poster art, Nerdtacular 14, that is, poster art, and Frog Pants logo in a display case for just $9.99. Don't read too much into that price, Third Eagle. Get yours at Nerdtacular or go to fantasycoinhq.com. Uh, I wonder what he would say. Somewhat like a transvestite. Oh, okay. Seems <laughs> it seems out of context. You but... know, again, I watched that commercial. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I don't know. See, I don't remember. Ever, I don't think I've ever seen the commercial prior to hearing Third Eagle's yeah. discussion about it. Yeah. But now that he's talked about the lead character being somewhat androgynous and sure. somewhat manly looking, sure. I can't unsee a guy in drag. <laughs> now, at the very, very beginning of the commercial, yeah. she's a very hot woman. Yeah. But the then light, there's lighting yeah. that hits. It's like a Seinfeld thing. Yeah. You, you put that woman in the wrong light and she's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very much so. You're right. It's funny yeah. because the things he brings up, mm -hmm. I think he's completely full of crap. But you can see why people buy into it because you yes. can. Well, right. I mean, it's the same thing. Kreskin telling your future in the middle of a, you know, a, a Donahue <laughs> episode. It's the same thing. Right, right. Well, Donahue. You know why some of those states were gray, right? When the, the Third Eagle would tell you why. I'd say, Third Eagle, why are those states gray? And times. All right. So I thought, oh. Wyoming. Florida mom arrested for falling, sorry, failing to take a baby to the hospital due to vegan beliefs. Oh, yes. Vegan beliefs. Take, don't, she doesn't want the hospital to eat her baby because it's made out of meat. Yep. Yep. I understand this completely. Conservative <laughs> listeners, this one's for you. All right, here we go. Strap in. I'm going to make fun of the hippies now. A central <laughs> Florida mother was arrested and charged after she refused to take her sick newborn to the hospital due to her vegan beliefs. She told this to police. Her police found this out. Castleberry police said a uh, pediatrician told Sarah Markham that her 13-day-old baby needed to be admitted to the Florida hospital for treatment because the child was dehydrated and was losing weight quickly, a local CBS affiliate reported. Miss Markham? Sounds like a superhero uh, name by day, doesn't it? Markham Asylum. Miss Markham. This is where she belongs. Later on, I become Florida woman. <laughs> uh, let's see never took the baby to the hospital instead went home police showed up and interviewed the mother who said she wanted to get a second opinion uh, the police said Markham is a seventh day Adventist and believes in holistic health yeah you probably should have said that in the headline because the seventh day thing is totally no it's not just vegan reasons mm -hmm. they don't take you right. to the hospital because they don't believe in transfusions and all this other stuff it's got all kinds of religious connection to it so it's not quite fair for them to say it was the veganism in her. Right, right. Because it it's not quite that, the same. In, in addition to this. Yes. Uh, Ooh, she's this been, is rough. She's been feeding the baby organic soy formula, which was, uh, cons what, and what concerned, what? And was concerned about what her baby might be fed at the hospital. 
She didn't want her child ingesting anything with animal byproducts, said Captain... Oh, sorry, Corporal, I guess. CPL? Corporal? Uh, Corporal, yeah, I guess. Corporal is weird for a police thing, yeah. right? Corporal Christine Pamathian said, quote, she wanted a second opinion with a holistic doctor. I like this the writing. Good job, Washington Times. Yeah. Um, she didn't want her child ingesting anything with animal byproducts, said Corporal Christine Pamathian, say. Oh, yeah, say. Say. You know, they are one of our prestigious newspapers. And, uh, Washington Times. Way to go, guys. Let's get an intern in there. I'm just looking at this stuff where you post it. That's, uh, uh, I hope that, um, I mean, I don't know. I, is if it, you is it a baby was abuse situation to say, no, maybe, I say no. Here's what I think. Okay. I think that All if right. it's 13 days in, your baby's mm -hmm. sick and you should take him to the hospital. The first thing, how does the, how did the hospital know? Because she left with the baby. Like, so, oh. uh, yeah, she was at the hospital and said, nope, I'm going home. I'm going to go home, get a holistic doctor's opinion. Right. Okay. I don't know what the law says, but I feel like if she would have done due diligence and gotten that second opinion quickly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then I don't think any of this leads to trouble because mm. she has that right. Mm -hmm. um, right. It, isn't this, it isn't the hospital's baby yet. <laughs> um, but then at the same time, if you're not going to do that and take it super serious and quickly get that second opinion, now you're putting a human being in danger. Yes, exactly. So I think there's a timing thing going on here that she goofed up on, and it is Florida, so we'll give her that. <laughs> okay. Uh, and nothing wrong I'm with vegans. A, I'm going to get a uh, second opinion. As soon as Wheel of Fortune's <laughs> over, then we're going. We're hitting the car right then. There you go. As soon as Wheel of Fortune's over. Yeah, no, go for an E. Always take the E. Oh, silly people. Double dibble. Dibble dibble. What? Double what? daily doubles, what I meant to say. <laughs> oh, that's Jeopardy. It might be the end of the day for me. <laughs> it's not Wheel of Fortune, it's Jeopardy. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, the wrong show too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't watch that Jeopardy. It's way too highbrow. Yeah. They got the dill dilly dipple. Another question? What is this? <laughs> It's not even a question. It's a statement, and then they answer it. What the hell? This this one's made for smart West Coast people. Not interested. <laughs> the awe-inspiring bleakness of HBO's The Leftovers, says this headline. I am really stoked about this series. I am too, yeah. This is uh, Damon Lindeloft. Yes. His next big project, and he's kind of been chided a little bit for some of his recent work. None, none of it has been lived up to Lost, or many would say his time on Lost didn't live up to Lost. Who knows? There's There's mm. been that argument. I'm nah, not saying I'm making I'm it. I'm certainly not one of those people. I liked Lost a lot, and I love their podcast. And I, and I like the ending, and I'm not going to complain about the ending of Lost because it was exactly the story they wanted to tell. So, right, they all turned out to be a, uh, a gaggle of walruses the whole time, and they just <laughs> it brain chips. It was amazing. Spoiler. Oh. The uh, this show, Tom Perolta, the guy that runs it, not Peralta, Perota. He's the showrunner. Uh, the Leftovers shouldn't make a good television show. The author who spends most of his time exploring the darkest parts of suburbia, I guess he's the author. Uh, Perota writes books that seem to lend themselves better to film adaptations, such as The Election or Little Children. First time I read The Leftovers, blah, 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 blah. Keeps going, keeps talking. Anyway, they say it's super bleak, kind of depressing, haunting, heart sick, frustrating. But he thinks it's the most promising show of the year and might be one of the best series of 2014. Now, this is the same premise as Left Behind, but it's not Left Behind. No, right? it's, a, it's a virus that ravaged humanity. Oh. And this is okay. now who's left trying to make oh, sense really? of society. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I thought this was like a, um, a bunch of people just disappeared, and it's like the people left behind, or the people... Nope. It's people okay. who weren't killed by the virus. There's not I... even a sci-fi bent to it, hmm. other than I maybe... Well, they'll... no, no. That's very sci-fi. It's like a virus that wipes... Well, that's true. Yeah. People out. There's not a religious bend to it. No, no, no. But there's not a like a. There's okay. not aliens or we were we disappeared and then showed up again or any of that. It's they they were killed by a super virus. Gotcha. Okay, I had no idea. I, I honestly thought this was like rapture related. No, no, no. And these are rapturesque. And these are the <laughs> rapturous. There you go. No, no, no interviews. No interviews. No, no interviews. I'm not here. I'm not alive anymore. Um, anyway, the point is that it looks good, and we're going to see it, and I can't wait. Is it out now? I guess it's out, or it's coming out? Something? Uh, coming out soon. All I'm right. looking at it right now. It's post-apocalyptic, so you're in. I'm in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I don't uh, care. Let's see. Based on Neville, same name, blah, 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 June 29th. That This show will air. This weekend. This weekend, Sunday night, in that coveted uh, Game of Thrones hole. Well, I'll have to borrow my friend's HBO Go account again. Great. <laughs> 
Game of Thrones hole. That's right. Peter Berg, by the way, also involved in this. Oh, I like Peter Berg. Uh, your your your, yes. uh, your Friday, Friday Night, Night Lights. Lights. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. What a hell of a show that was. Mm-hmm. Love that show. Sarah. Okay, now this. Yeah. Hold on a second. Yeah. The yeah. premise. According to Wikipedia, the premise is this exactly. I'm reading it verbatim. The Leftovers takes place in the wake of a global rapture and centers on the people who are not taken but were left behind in a suburban community. That sounds like Left Behind. <laughs> it does. Hold on. The Leftovers. Yeah. I, I heard it was a, just a virus that killed everybody. You're thinking of The Last Ship. Am I? You might be. Oh, no. Here it is. The pilot was written by Linda Loft and... And it's got a, the premise takes place. You're right. Global rapture and centers on people who are not taken but left behind in a suburban community. Mm -hmm. Well, then, I think you're thinking of the last ship. What, uh, it, the last ship. The last ship. Is that a show? Uh, 2014 television series based on the novel. After a global pandemic kills or sickens over 50% of the world's population, the crew, consisting of 217 men and women of a lone, unaffected U.S. Navy guided missile destroyer, the fictional U.S. Nathan James, uh, must try to find a cure and stop the virus in order to save humanity. Okay. All right. Well, I didn't. That's weird. I, I'm fine with this, too. <laughs> it's not a problem, but it sounds just like the leftovers, or not the leftovers, the other one. The, the left, behind. left behind. Yeah. Um, Ooh, the last ship has Adam Baldwin. Which one? It's Thomas Thomas Jane, the last ship. Oh, T Jane, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. The one that's a jerk on Twitter. Oh, I'm sorry, not Thomas Jane. No, just Thomas, Jane. No, just Jane. Yeah. Just Jane. Yeah. Thomas Jane is a guy who's uh, right. actor, plays other things. <laughs> He's the Punisher. Yeah. yeah. He was. Wait, wait. Is that right, Thomas Jane? Thomas Jane played the Punisher. Played the, pun the, the first iteration. Punisher. Yes. And then he was also in that great Stephen King movie uh, call, made by the Shawshank uh, director called The Mist, which I oh, loved. Yeah. Right. Loved The Mist, based on a short story. And almost the entire cast of The Mist ended mm -hmm. up in Walking Dead. Walking Dead. <laughs> and that was also run by a guy's name I can't remember, who, made, who, who directed the Shawshank Redemption. Anyway. Right. I'm trying to find other references here, but I think you must be right. Yeah. So Leftovers also has uh, your favorite, Liv Tyler. Oh, I like Liv Tyler. Got, uh, Christopher, except when she's got... Uh, if you want him, come and claim button. him! That's what she'd say. <laughs> right? Or she's got, a, she got an animal cracker in her belly button yelling, if you want him, you should come and claim right. him. <laughs> yes. And Christopher Eccleston, so uh, the my favorite doctor. Yeah, you liked him a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I like him generally. Amy Brennerman, she was on... Uh, ER for a while, I yeah, think. The ER, like yeah, the ER, yeah. The uh, the Just, emergency room. Justin Thoreau. Mm hmm Yeah, yeah. Was she uh, was she in ER or was she NYT? Oh, she was NYPD Blue. That's yeah. that's right. Yeah. Well I'm in. I'll I'll see it. I want You'll to. probably watch both of them, won't you? Yeah, I will. I'll watch both and be confused as hell as to what I'm saying. <laughs> the ship now, the, the, the ship thing the sounds ship? really interesting too. When's it, when, who's who's airing that? What's the channel for that? Do we know I that? Say that's like AMC. I just closed the window, but uh All right. I uh, want to it. say it's like FX or AMC. I, I keep seeing ads for it on um, in the 20 before you go and see a movie. Oh, right. And it seems like they really focus on stuff that's going to be on AMC. Oh, that's weird. Uh, TNT. There we go. TNT. It's be Close on TNT. enough. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. I'll we'll do these last two here. Frank Darabont is who you're Frank thinking. Darabont. Yep. That's him. Mm -hmm. Love that guy. Uh, Sarah Jessica Parker. Three names. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, one long face. To return to a TV <laughs> and a crime thriller. Uh, she's going to be playing a very different kind of journalist. The Sex in the City actress who played sex columnist Carrie Bradshaw on HBO's hit series Sex in the City is attached to star in a crime thriller, Deadline reported. The show busted, qu uh, colon, a tale, busted, colon, that's what that says. <laughs> busted, colon, a tale of corruption and betrayal in the city of brotherly love. That's the title, dude. Yeah. That's that's going to be really easy to search for. Thanks. Uh, same producers as True Detective, though, so that's interesting. Mm. Uh, the plot line is based on a true story and a book of the same title. Investigates reporters Wendy Ruderman and Barbara Laker, who helped uncover one of the biggest uh, police uh, corruption scandals in Philadelphia's history. It actually kind of sounds kind of interesting. It sounds interesting. I'm not going to like the little uh, typing narrative that yeah. Sarah Jessica Parker's character has. Which yeah. I Do like we that. lose our heads when we have a beheading? <laughs> Busted colon. All right. <laughs> and finally, a dude cannot fit his iron throne in his freaking house. Uh, <laughs> a man is, uh, he's kind of... The carpenter he, is coming. He, he's a, it's a New Jersey apartment dude who got a life-size replica of the Game of Thrones throne 
uh, as a as a contest. It was an HBO fan contest, and he oh, won. Oh, really? Okay. Oh. It's seven foot two tall, three hundred and fifty <laughs> pounds. Oh God. It's enormous, and it doesn't fit. Right now, it's sitting in his parents' garage. It's an awesome, huge thing. Thirty <laughs> grand worth. Hand painted fiberglass knockoff. Looks just like the sword deal, and he can't fit it in his house. Oh my God. I'm. I'm loving just the visual of this guy sitting in his Iron Throne in his parents' garage. Yep. <laughs> That's amazing, right? You open the door. Right. Like Bring the, me Sansa's head. Like, like, <laughs> like the Blood Fort or something. Not the Blood Fort. What's it called? The Flayed Man? What are they? The, the Dread Fort. Dread Fort, his own yeah, personal sure. Dread Fort. Uh, he wants to sell it. and uh, I mean, he loves it, but he's going to sell it because he's gonna. he says he'd use the money to get a bigger place. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But then he won't have the thing to put in it. Right. So. <laughs> it's the, uh, quite the conundrum. Yeah. Good luck to you there, buddy. It's going to do it for that. Gift of the, the gift of the Magi. No, not Gift of the Magi. What's the, what's the Christmas story about the, uh, oh, uh, the woman who sells her hair to buy a pocket watch for her husband and right. he sells his chain, his gold chain, to buy a comb for her or brush? Old, old, I almost said old yeller. Why am I saying that? <laughs> The shittiest Christmas story ever. The worst Christmas. <laughs> Starring. Yeah. Something like that. All right. Well, we've had uh, we've had worse Christmases than this. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have Eric here. We'll do your Twitter questions and more. So stay tuned for that. Gift of the Magi. I thought Gift of the Magi was the um, the three wise men. I thought that was some in some relation to the Gift of the Magi. I don't know, dude. Okay. All right. I'm behind. Uh, you want to do some music? What do we got? Let's do some music. And um, we said Jay first, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Okay. Uh, hello, Sandwich and Birok. Birok. Uh, Jessica Hips, Geek Girl in the Tadpool and Family, are celebrating the anniversary of her 21st birthday on June 29th. And in honor of my wonderful wife of five years, I'd like to dedicate a song. So this is Mr. Geek Girl uh, requesting a song for, uh, for Jessica. Oh, nice. Uh, I could go on and on about how wonderful Jessica is, but I don't think you would have the time to read it all. So suffice it to say, I married way out of my league, and I thank my lucky stars to this day that she hasn't realized how much better she could do than me. Uh, as, as husbands, don't we all feel that way? Uh, Jessica loves just about everything that Lindsay Sterling and Peter Hollins do, but I think she's pretty much requested them all from you. So how about if you find a play, find and play a cover of Jessica by the Allman Brothers Band? Uh, and then he says, happy birthday, sweetheart. I love you. Thanks. Jared Hips, uh, J-Rod, on the off chance I can get into the tadpole. Yeah. Uh, this is great because I will look for any opportunity, any excuse I can find to play this cover. I love this version, and it's so uh, – you don't often hear instrumental covers. Now, the original version of Jessica by Allman Brothers was written about the daughter – of one of the band members, uh, and it's an instrumental piece, really, really cool instrumental piece. And uh, They Might Be Giants included a cover of it on their EP of White as the Sunshine that they released back in 1993. And uh, what's fun about this is that it still has the feel of the original, but it's got a very They Might Be Giants-y um, sound to it because of the accordion and the um, uh, the the other kind of recognizable uh, they might be giants instruments that they use. The um, and it also has all of the trucker chord changes, the gear changes that you know and love from that song. So here it is, Jessica. They might be giants covering the Almond Brothers. All right. Well, here it is. Ooh, almonds sound good, don't they? Kind of almonds. <laughs> mm. Mm, made me think of it. Uh, so here it is. We'll be back in a minute with Eric and your Twitter questions and more. Stay tuned.
Wow, that was a big ending there. Yes. I like it. That sound, you hear that sound? That yes, means? that's the Tempest machine going in the background. I was playing. Oh, <laughs> so oh I love that more, sound. Two more lives left and then it's over. All right, I like it. It's oh, weird. It oh. sounded like you were scratching something at first. Oh, and then... One more? One more. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to get a high score, so... Oh, sweet. <laughs> I love this. That's it. Okay. There's the high score sound. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right. You're bringing me back, dude. <laughs> That's awesome. Very uh, nice. All right, we are going to call Eric now. Oh, where's his good. name? Oh, Keto. Uh-oh. Why isn't he coming up? It's under Hakito. I mean, oh, Skyhawk. Sure it's it's been Skyhawk. a while. Yeah, 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 I forgot how he did it. Jeez, freaking Skyhawk. I know. Pick a name. Pick a name right. and Would stick you? with it, okay? Come on. Jeez. What are we doing here? What's this What's this game we're playing? Uh, Eric Von Hello, Von Eric. Skyhawkito. Hockey Skyhawkito or something. Skyhawkito. What's going on, man? Uh, Fresh back God. from the West Coast. Are you still a little lagged or what? I'm a little bit tired, but I'm surviving. Yeah. You you're one of the busiest dudes I know. Like as chilled out as Eric is about most things, uh, you get him out there working, and uh, it's got to be pretty intense. And then you get home, and you're probably ready to crash a little bit. Yeah, but it all starts up. Another one starts up. Yeah, like, you, you, I flew back yesterday, and then first thing in the office, I was doing more casting for my next spot next week. Wow! And then I was off to an editing house to edit some the. One of the spots I shot last week. And then, yeah, yeah. And why LA? Was it just a, a better location for what you had to do, or what? Uh, yeah. Just uh, the director was out there, and better locations, and gotcha. stuff like that. Mm, it's interesting to me because, how, I mean, how? Well, this is just this is probably a boring question for you, but I think people would be interested. If you're trying to scout out a location, and it's like, oh, we need city, then you just stay in New York, do it there. Right. Uh, yeah, but we're just we we needed a house that had a, like a a nice vista, big a open palm sky, tree. Mm. <laughs> and, a, and a palm tree. No, yeah, uh, grapefruit, yes. grapefruit tree in the background. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, that's cool. All right, did you have to film any slime while you were there or no? Uh, there was no slime this time around. All right. Well, it's too bad because so. that's what I my stereotype is that everything you do has slime in it. Now, I guess I've got that wrong. Uh, it doesn't matter because Eric's here to talk to us about uh, hang. Well, he's going to hang out with us in general. He's also going to talk about an app. Yeah. We haven't played this in a while, so just to make everyone happy uh, at Happy Home, everyone at home happy, <laughs> I'm going to play this can right here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, you sound great. Yeah. All right. You sound really good. Can you hear this? I've been talking to you for like the last three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I, you guys got That's cut out. Oh. 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 Oh, is there anything better than that? It sounds so good. Uh, I, I do too. It's great. So you told me earlier uh, via text that you do actually have an app to talk about this week. What is it? I do. It's called Two Dots. Two Dots. I think Two I heard dots. of this. Didn't play it, but heard of it. One cup. <laughs> <laughs> there are two uh, dots, Brian. Uh, yes, two dots. So what is it? Explain. Game, I assume. It's a game, and it's kind of nice because you know how Candy Crush kind of rips somebody off? Yeah, big time. Yeah, well, this game rips off Candy Crush. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good. That's interesting. How do you like it? <laughs> but 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 in what? I mean, it's it's not fruit or candy this time. What is it this time that you're trying to make match dots. three or whatever? Yeah, can you guess what it is? <laughs> is it dots by chance? <laughs> it is dots. All right. Um. What, but but that sounds boring. Like if it's just dots, you know what I mean? But it has it has a little a twist to it. All I right. mean, it's pretty much the same thing. But what you do is. Uh, they're different colored dots, and to make the dots disappear, you can you need to have two in a row for them to disappear. So to just connect them. Mm. And is it only why only two? Because usually these things are match three or more. Exactly, that's the difference. And this one is it only it's mm. only two. And the cool uh, six minute app. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, but then then you have like different like um objectives like you have to get a certain amount of co each color kind of like candy crush right yeah and then you have to they have these anchors which you have to get to the bottom of the screen and have go off the board trying to sink the anchors and then they have ice that you have to break kind of like the with the chocolate i guess yeah yeah and this is free in a is candy it? crush um i'm not sure how much it is i it's think it's free, free. yep it's free with, yeah it's uh, free 
with in-app purchases. Yep, and I bet you can't guess what that in-app purchase is. Hmm. I'm guessing it's coins or gold or... Uh... Nope, there's none of that. Oh, more dots. <laughs> nope. More dots. More dots. <laughs> more, more dots. dots. <laughs> Here's some game. I found... Oh, there's a guy talking. Never mind. I was trying to find some gameplay of it. Uh, oh, here it is. It has this cool theme music in the beginning. Look at this. Yeah, it's very well art directed. Yeah. I have to say. And you would know because that's cool. what you do. I am an art director. Yeah, yeah. So you would know a good. Uh, like it looks like it has a cool, <laughs> has a cool kind of bubbly headed, uh, you know, vector image looking character stuff in it. Uh, yeah, it's all very graphic and flat and vectory. If huh. that's a word. Yeah. Uh, there's like a thing where you, if you connect like a four dots in a square, everything in that color will disappear on the board. So you're always wanting to get those squares. And uh, so, yeah, it's pretty much what it is. But the in-app purchases is you get about, I will see, let me, let me check this out before I. Uh... Here it is, two dots. I'm going to download it. Yeah. It's very, very well done, but you get one, two, three, four, five lives. And guess what happens after you use all your li five lives? Yes. What? You probably have to wait 24 hours to get more. <laughs> uh, you can either pay 99 cents to refill your life, or yeah. you can wait 20 minutes for each life to regenerate. Oh, wow. 20 minutes. I don't like games with the timer thing. That's, yeah, the, that's the most egregious of the free-to-play games tropes don't you think uh yes yeah, yeah for sure but the thing is is also or you can use that you know 99 cents to buy a bomb which will blow up a the dots and the dots surrounding that dot so so i'm, I'm pulling this down it doesn't mm -hmm. look it looks real basic is it mm -hmm. it's a nice yeah, well, it's, interface it's, yeah it's a great interface but that's they start Johnny off i've designed <laughs> yeah it's like you have to start off slow so you get the you know the uh, the concept and then they'll get, make it more difficult as you progress. Okay. And they still have they have the map like the Candy Crush map where you can see you know if you hook it up to Facebook you can see where your friends are yeah, and they can have the the top three scores you know with your Facebook friends when you nice. complete a level. Well, I screwed up. People who <laughs> Brian's already playing it. People who um who take a game that already works kind of well and then do a better job with art direction, graphics, sound, flow, yeah. that kind of stuff. I'm kind of all for that. I know it seems like I'm arguing for people just to copy each other, but there's something about... I mean, video games are iterative well, anyway. You know, Everybody steals let's, from let's, everybody. Let's be honest. Uh, what is it, King? Is that who does uh, Candy Crush? Uh, yes, that's King. They're the ones that are yeah. screwing everybody all the time. Yeah, they're being dicks, so I don't care if somebody rips them off. <laughs> <laughs> Eric sounded so big Hollywood type just now when he said that, didn't he? No, I mean, like, you know, you hear that they're, they're trying to copyright candy, the word candy and crush or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, right. stop that's it. That's right. Yeah, that's they're stupid. I agree. Stupid. I completely agree. Um, but, but regardless, like, name wise, forget about all that. For me, it's like if you take a good gaming concept and then you take that mechanic or whatever that already works and then you iterate on it in a better way or a prettier way or whatever, I kind of like that. I'm into that. Um, to me, it's more than that. That that's, that's making more of it than just, uh, you know, a ripoff with a similar name. Like if you're gonna do a Flappy Bird ripoff, right, right. And I'd much rather yeah, Snappy Bird, Snappy Bird, right, yeah. or Flappy Turd well, or whatever. Well, that's the thing is that you know the Candy Crush was ripped off from another candy game. Oh, that's right. So, that's right. At the time, so they didn't even change. I mean, and then they made all these legal claims like a bunch of buttholes. Yep. Uh, how many? All right, hold on here. How, how many, many dots? How many offensively, uh, <laughs> offensive-looking Russian, uh, tiny, fat-faced <laughs> characters would you give this out of five? I would give it a a four. It's really well done. Love the way it's done. Love the little sound effects when you're putting the dots together, and the it's fun. But then I have to take a a Russian thingamajig <laughs> off the table, a bowl of borscht, uh -huh. because of the uh, the waiting for your lives to regenerate. Yeah. yeah. I, I, but I have people like, I have coworkers who's like, oh, that's great, because then I don't spend all my time playing this game. Yeah. It forces you to step away. Exactly. <laughs> sure. 
I'm, I'm just uh it's clever though it makes you think i mean you've got to really think about your moves ahead of the time as opposed to just just going gonzo and you know yeah and exactly you know you and, get... and the, the, what i like about this you got to kind of like you know like see if i do this maybe i can create a square down here type of thing mm-hmm. you know right. instead of like with candy crush you just have the ones that do that same thing but it just it's a one piece of candy hold on this reminds me of another game i'm playing this now it reminds me of uh is it box it no. This is... I feel like I've played this. Hmm. Um, all right, well. I, I can't explain what I'm even saying now. There's another game just like this that I have played. And to tell me what... For me to tell you what it is, I couldn't tell you. Maybe it's in my games group here. Let me just double check. Yeah, Dots! <laughs> <laughs> what? So this is I, the sequel. I have a game called... Maybe it's the same people. This is the sequel, yeah. This oh, is, uh, people it, in the chat room were saying that this is the sequel to just plain dots. Okay, play our new game Two Dots free for iPhone. It, 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 it prompted me. So, I get it. All right, it's the it same is. people. That's, That's why that felt identical to me at the beginning there. I'm not familiar with just plain dots. Yeah, dots was a big deal for a little while. People were really into it. And it was. It's basically this that thing over was and it, over. Is this an iPhone? Yeah. Oh, totally. They don't. I, I assume it's still on the store. though. you could probably get both. Um, but it was just called dots. It's the same. You you'd play it and you go, oh, it's identical. Like the swipe, the way it swipes, the way the little two things smear together like that. The the color palette, all of it identical. It's just that it was always just one big screen of random dots. And you trying to beat the clock, basically, or, or get as many as you could, or whatever. Oh, there was a clock involved? I don't, I don't remember. I think there was a time mode or something. There's different modes. But they've gone, they've taken it further here. Uh, I guess this is just, this is almost like, it's kind of making sense to me now. They're trying to be all hipstery. It's like, that was dots. And now we have two dots, which is like saying dots two. Right, right. And in the first game, you had <laughs> to Look connect. Look who else is dots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to you had to connect at least two dots in the first one too. That if that makes sense, it's, yeah. it's the same game. I mean, except it looks like this might have some more stuff going on. And I think you had yeah. to pay for the first one. I think that was the difference too. Well, the thing is, is this like I'm in the, the like the frozen level right now where you have to break ice. But I mean, I don't know what I'm going to hit when I get to the, like the lava level. You know, yeah. Like mm-hmm. what kind of game mechanics are going to introduce? You know. Yeah, that's all new. So that's good. Well, I'm totally going to play because I loved that first one, mm-hmm. but it was. It was giving me a brain fart there for a minute. It's like I know I've seen this before. All right, Eric, you're gonna hang around with us and do some uh, do some Twitter. Yeah, I have stuff. a quick app review that I want to do really quick. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Have you heard of Slingshot? Uh, no. Hmm. So <clears throat> hold on, let me think. Gonna... No, I don't. No. Okay. <laughs> this is kind of like a snapshot, Snapchat kind of same concept, you know? Okay. All right. And. Uh, but the only thing, the difference is this, is that if somebody sings you a slingshot, you actually have to send them a picture for you to unlock that slingshot. <laughs> oh, no way. It's like Snapchat with ransom. Yeah. Exactly. Hold on. Okay, okay. Let me get this straight. I send you a picture of my left nipple, right? Yep. You can't see it until you send me a picture of something else. But how do you even know? Because it says, I got a slingshot from... Uh, I've got a slingshot from, uh, uh, I got a slingshot from Scott, but it's locked. Yeah, but, can... but oftentimes the, if you sent me a, fa- uh, you sent me a, um, the other one, what's the Snapchat. other Snapchat, the whole point of it would be how oh, Eric made a funny face and pointed at something. I'm going to reply back with a photo of me laughing about the thing he pointed at. Well, Does not that... even that because you'll see, you'll, you'll have to send him your laughter before you see what you're laughing about. Exactly. No, but that's the thing that's is you weird. have to send me something, but once you see my picture, yeah. You can actually do what's called a reaction, which is you're reacting to the photo I just sent you. Oh, That's would you a different have to, would you have to send him something new to see his reaction? Is, that, uh, no, is it always one for one? <laughs> when you get a reaction, you that's it's always unlocked. Okay, well that was my point. Was like if it wasn't, if it was the way Ibit was suggesting or you know asking, that would have been real bad. <laughs> yeah, I still think this is really bad. Yeah, yeah. What I do like you think, the, Eric? You know the concept. Yeah, actually, he's you're the one doing the review. You no, should I tell us hear Brian you like too. I want to hear both of you. But go, uh, well, the thing is, is is like you know I can you know on Snapchat. I mean, it seems like it's a one way thing with you, right? Yeah. <laughs> Specifically, I mean, you, you don't even open up, you don't even open up my Snapchats. I send to you. I do too. I see them all. You do not. I, I have a dingus. Sunday delivered, not open. Oh well, if you mean on a, in a timely well, manner, lately. yeah, <laughs> in a timely manner. If you mean in a timely manner, then no, um, I'm a little behind here. Let me go see which one I got from you. 
I'm always on the hunt. For, I'm always worried that naked lady's gonna send me something new. Okay, phew, it's you know not. Her, yeah, you, you, you know I'm not gonna send you anything. No, I know. Here you are. By the pool. Look at you by the pool. That's where we shot. Okay, that was the shoot. Um, was there just the one shot? Yeah. I don't know. Is that was all I sent you? So now does it show as I read it? Yep. Okay. All right. Just now. Open. You guys are gonna see if this one. Okay. Nope. I was gonna say let's see if I got a naked one, but I didn't. Uh, the cool thing about Slingshot is it's kind of like, you know, it's like, you know, a little for tit for tat, you know? Yeah. I mean, so that's what I, <laughs> what I kind of like tat? about it. Where can I get it? And where can I exchange it for the other thing? Yeah, I don't I don't want any... I have tat. <laughs> <laughs> um, interesting. I don't know. Is it taken off? Are people into it? It's okay. I mean, I was, I've been doing it with Tom Merritt a little bit here and there, so... Um, yeah, and that and that's gone okay. Has has he? <laughs> has he? First? So this is this is the tricky thing about it, okay? Because it, it's the same thing about the Snapchat, where it's like you once it's gone, it's gone type of thing. Yeah, but you can take snap sh uh, screenshots of it, and it doesn't let the other person know. Oh, well, it does that with. Uh, I mean, you can do that with Snapchat too, right? Yeah, but you no, tells the other snap person. Snapchat, it tells you if somebody oh, takes. Oh, does a it really? Yeah, it says oh, someone it does. So, it says someone oh, took a picture. Oh, Brian Ibb is like, ah, oh, damn. Oh no, no, I've never done that because I've never. <laughs> you never. Used Used it erroneously. It was like, oh, I, I want to save that one for later. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Snapchat will let you know if they take oh, a screenshot funny. of it. Brian just sent me one. I gotta. Now I gotta. Here. Oh, is it? Oh no. Jeez. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> this thing doesn't work right. Wow. All this right. This is why he doesn't get our Snapchats, people. There's the yeah. worst Snapchat ever, Brian. Enjoy that one. <laughs> did you just send back? Oh, you did. Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah, it's bad. Um. Anyway. <laughs> Glorious. It's like yeah, your grandpa. The glorious damn thing. How do you turn this damn thing on? <laughs> That's what that was. Um, just send me one. I bet anyway, it's all right. So anyway, slingshots kind of interesting. How many? How many unintended uh, <laughs> testicle pictures out of five would you give it? Uh, I'll give it like a three and a half. You okay, know, it's not bad. Four. It's an interesting concept on the whole like. Like like you you got me to sign up for that stupid poke thing and I'm like why are you doing that oh poke I didn't get you to do anything I just I used Facebook poke one time and I thought well who do I know on oh, I'll just do Eric because you and I used to always experiment these dumb new apps on each other so I thought I'll just do Eric so I put you in there and I haven't looked at that app since <laughs> yeah I, I erased it off my phone I was like this is it's Facebook poke they have some bonus it's like extra Snapchat app. for Facebook yeah pretty much. yeah yeah I remember when they were talking about doing that and you know. All the, it's lame. It's it is lame. It's super lame. Uh, anyway, but uh, yeah, I can hang out while you do where you guys. Yeah, do. yeah, hang around with us here, won't you? Yeah. Well, you'll do it with us. Yeah, you'll do it. You're you'll, not just gonna. You're not just gonna sit there and. Yeah, well, you're uh, gonna answer some of this stuff too, man. Right. Don't get excited, or don't get what? Yeah, don't get excited. Something <laughs> like that. Uh, all right. Well, let's do that. Let's jump right in. Uh, I got a little theme for it. It goes like this. And you can always follow me on Twitter. Goes tweet. Want to go bird hunting this weekend? It's Twitter time. That's Twitter questions from you using the hashtag at TMS questions. It's brought to you by the Deer God, a game of reincarnation for PC, Mac, or Linux. What is this, Scott? It, Deer, God's Deer God. Oh, go ahead. Keep reading. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I supposed to? You're no, supposed I was. To I, yeah, I screwed you up. You keep read oh. that. Read that. And I'll say, okay. you know what, Brian? It's great, but I think you know more than you're leading on. Now you read it. <laughs> well, I do. The Deer God is a game about survival, reincarnation, and karma, all set in a breathtaking, unique 3D pixelized world. Feast your eyes on the beautiful lighting, day and night system, and mesmerizing water reflections. That is taken right from their Kickstarter. I just think this looks rad, so I put it in That's here. It's really funny. The deer gun. It's spelled D E E R, folks. So yeah. don't uh, look for like an actual deer, like a right, like a deer, and like then that, one of those and things in headlights. Yeah, and that's what's in the game. Like that's what you were looking at, and it is gorgeous. The video will blow your mind. So all you gotta do is just Google it. Just Google the deer god, and you'll get their Kickstarter first thing. Hmm. Deer um, god or the, guide? The deer god. The deer god. Like the god of the deers. You know, like the like the god of the angles or the god of not angles. What, what am I trying to say? Lord the, of the dance. Lord of the dance, like that. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get from there to that? I don't know. <laughs> dance lords. That's what we do here. So uh, TMS questions. They come to us using that hashtag at or sorry hashtag TMS questions. We get them all week, and we're just gonna read some of these, and I'm gonna play a little music. We'll do it. All right, here we go. What is your preferred method for time travel? TARDIS, phone booth, DeLorean, HG Wells, or other? Hmm. hmm. Yeah, like Brian, if you took break, break down all the, yeah. the Hollywood yeah. uh, time travel movies, which is your favorite? That, uh, not not the movie, DeLorean, but delivery. Sure. Okay. 
All right. Yeah, because you got all right. So all right, the TARDIS can go anywhere in time and space. So you can say, all right, I want to end up over there on that street corner. But with the DeLorean, you can say, all right, just get me back to that time. I'll take care of the driving because I'm still going to need to probably get around while I'm there. Right. So you want a car. Unless yeah, you're for sure. Marty and you just park it in the hay or whatever, right? Because you, well, want, you want to see it. Yeah, sure. He was afraid to be called a witch. He's a witch. <laughs> Eric, how about you? Do you have a preferred method of time travel? Uh, I'd have to go with uh, Brian on this one. Uh, on the DeLorean. Why mm. wouldn't you guys want to be in a Klingon bird of prey and be whipped around the sun real fast, and then you could go anywhere you want after that? And then you have a whole well, ship. Because, because you've always got to have a sun nearby. Oh, crap. <laughs> That's a good exactly. point. But the DeLorean's never going to go anywhere but the Earth, you know? Like, yeah. You couldn't. Yeah, uh, but this is where time else do you want to go in time? Yeah, you're like, yeah, you want me like, to go? I'd like to go to the moon 23 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> wow, this is exciting. No, I want to go to Earth, but what I want to do is go whip around the sun and say 1941, and then, or however they do it, then I whip so then around. You've got to fly your bird of prey yeah. back to Earth yeah. in but 1941. But you have warp speed. Down? It's just warp speed. You're fine. It's quick. <laughs> It's not like they're slow or anything. So then, but you if get, you're if you're going to end up on Earth anyway, why not just stay there? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. All right. It's a bad idea then. All right. I want to. I know. Naked in a Terminator ball. How about that? The Terminator. Worse. Was, that, was that an option? <laughs> yeah. It can be any of these things. Worse. She says that a other. Funny, uh, because uh, of naked. Yeah. <laughs> that a funny reference to uh, Back to the Future and a million ways to die. Oh, did you oh, see really? that? Oh uh, yeah, I did. How was it? It is exactly what you expect. It reviewed like, terribly. I know it did, and it, you know what? It's it's. It, I wasn't expecting like you know Shakespeare or anything, but it's you know it's Seth MacFarlane. It's like if you like that type of humor and this kind of way of his acting, like Family Guy, then it's the movie for you. Yeah, I'm trying to find the. Yeah, here it is. It only ever topped out at 33. I yeah, guess it's, there are worse things, but not much. Ooh, tran the new Transformers, dude. Boo, 13%. Not so good yeah. Oh, man. Who has, who has that one in the... Uh, but you know what? You know what it's, still gonna make, it's still going to make a It's still going to make so much money. Yeah, they know their audience. They'll be fine. I think those guys are going to make it. We're, we're in the lead right now on the thing. Yeah, right? we are. We better enjoy this right now. <laughs> yeah, enjoy it while we got it. But if this movie does oh, yeah. well... Are, we do are you guys doing the fantasy movie thing yeah. as, a, as shows now instead of well, individuals? Well, we, we, as teams, yeah. We did teams. Because oh, there were so teams. many who wanted to be in it, we had to split it up. Uh, but uh, I, Night Attack, Team Night Attack has uh, uh, Transformers. Okay, well they have not had anything hit up till now, so no. it's going to take them a while. So we may enjoy our top spot for a bit here. Right. Yeah, Edge of Tomorrow did not do as well for them as um, as they would have they would have hoped. Financially, kind of tanked. Critically, it was awesome, and I loved that, that was movie. A, it was a great movie. Yeah, I had mm -hmm. a great time at that. Even with Center Tooth guy. Yeah, I'm all right with Center Tooth. <laughs> and Transformers, you know, I guess it's not enough to have a guy going, "Hey, you guys, I think we found a Transformer." Hey, I think this <laughs> I think this truck is a transformer. <laughs> say uh, say hello to your mother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Make sure you take the kids to go see Planes Fire and Rescue. Uh admit this is for you. You ready? All right. Yeah, I'm ready. I don't want to see Fire and Rescue, by the way. I saw the no, trailer. No, no, we own that so other people need to oh, see. Oh, it. Uh, everyone go see Fire and Rescue. Sorry. Screwed that up. Ibit. Would yes. you rather this says is this Thor Thornton's Wall? Uh, said, yeah, but would you rather give up coffee or beer if you had to give up one? Which would it be? <laughs> Easy. I'll give up beer in a heartbeat. Oh. I drink beer one one uh, day a year. Uh, yeah, you're, no, not really saying, a, you're not really a beer fan. I'm you? not a beer drinker, no. I go to the Great American Beer Fest every year because it is, uh, it's fun, and I like beer in one-ounce increments. Because yeah. <laughs> if I don't like a beer, uh, I only had to drink one ounce of it, and I can move on to something else. Yeah. So are but, you more uh, of a wine guy? Uh, more of a hard liquor guy, like um, like a whiskey um, man. Whiskey, vodka, rum, bourbon, bourbon. Are you a bourbon? Bourbon man? on its own, not so much, but bourbon and like an old fashioned. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, I will. I will take your word that that's a thing people drink. Never mm -hmm. heard of that one before. An old fashioned. I don't know what that an is. An old fashioned. Uh, I yeah. I'm glad he asked you because I don't drink either of those things, so it doesn't matter. Right. Right. Neither do I. It's like, would you rather give up Gatorade or water? Uh, probably Gatorade. Kombucha or... <laughs> Kombucha or what other hippie drink. liquid. Yeah. <laughs> People are always astounded how I, I function in the morning at work. They're like, how do you... How do you live without, without all that coffee? Yeah. So are you are you a never drank coffee guy or are you a gave up coffee guy? 
Oh, I never drank coffee. Yeah, really? same here. And so I think what it is is if you've never had it, you don't know the crash. Like you don't know the mm-hmm. difference. You might still be tired, but you're since you've never sort of artificially stimulated your morning, you don't know what's on right. the other end of it. I guess. I mean, my wife loves a good cup of Joe. She loves it. But I, I don't know that I don't I don't like the smell. It's like smell on the back of my grandma's hand. Yes, I do not like uh, the <clears throat> uh, the girlfriend coffee breath in the the morning. Yeah, right. <laughs> Kissing. Yeah. So it's like, hey, Eric. Whatever. Blah. Juan Valdez <laughs> breath. <laughs> um, what instruments do a- any of you play? Says Renee. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Brian. Oh, I was gonna say I get a, I get a coffee recommendation for Kim that I'll text you. It is. Oh, please um, do. It's it, w- it blew my mind when I found out that it was freeze dried. But freeze dried coffee is just basically coffee that's been made and then, and then all the moisture has been taken out. So it's not like you're not drinking real coffee. Right. This stuff is amazing. All right. It's um, called anyway. Folgers. Folgers. It's not Folgers. <laughs> wow, you're going to share this no. great tell, re- revelation <laughs> with Folgers? You know what? I'll tell, you, I'll tell people on the air. It is uh, Dewey Egbert's Pure Gold, and you can get it at Amazon. It's oh. D-O-U-W-E. Egbert's is E-G-B-E-R-T-S, and it's um, pure gold. And it is, I don't know what they put into this, but it is the best coffee I've ever had. The best part of waking up. Well, TMS, TMS Morning Blend is the best coffee I've yeah, ever right. had. Yeah, right. Okay, come on. This get your, the second best Get coffee. your marketing straight here. That's right. uh, okay, I'm sorry. So no, you're fine. Question. What instruments do we play? I'm, I don't play any. Brian, you, what do you play? I anything? play keyboard by ear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't. Isn't that I, tough? Just I can uh, it with your just ear? bang my head on the keyboard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I can read music if I had to, but um, I can't read it fast enough to to keep up with my playing. So I'm I can actually play. All right, fairly well, fairly well by ear. Eric's Eric's the real Eric. <laughs> Eric, you're talking Eric. about ears. Eric here is uh, is the real musician in the group here. Playing makes I'm music actually, all the time. Actually, I'm not really because I don't know how to read music. So you're the same. You play you play and create stuff by what you like, how things sound, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. I mean, I played drums for over 10 years growing up, and so I know how to read drum music and stuff like that. But yeah. that's pretty much I took a little guitar lessons here and there. I guess I did take piano when I was like seven for a year, but none, none of that stuff really stuck. Right. Mm. Uh, here's, a weird, so. here's a weird question. This one's real weird. Brian James wrote in. Okay. Says I have a love for Diablo three, two trucks and four wheels. Can you help me out? What does that mean? <laughs> oh come on! I don't know what it means. Two trucks, four wheels. What does that mean? Skateboard. Oh. <laughs> oh, he's trying to win the skateboard contest. Oh. That he won't win now. Just kidding, Brian. You're still in the running, buddy. <laughs> okay. I, I, I trucks. I always forget trucks are the things that hold the wheels on a skateboard. Yeah. Nick would yeah. have known this because he's all into it right now. All right. Well, I feel like an idiot. Uh, Wait, is is it over yet? What? No. Sun, Saturday's the last day. Oh, I gotta I gotta sign up. Yeah, for get that. in there, dude. You're you're eligible. I know. You're, you're hella eligible. Anybody can get in, except me, which is really depressing. <laughs> you guys should see Pretty, this thing. I can see it it's right awesome. over there. It's beautiful. Oh wow. gosh. Signed by the entire team three. Uh, all the Diablo devs signed oh, it. Oh wow! Yeah, and wow. they never were going to make another one. It's the only one in existence. It's insane. I can't um, wait to win it and then eBay it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll do one more here. We got one from Paul. Oh, by the way, yeah. by the way, I got the ring the the other day. You ended up getting it. Well, no wonder you weren't jumping to our defense with Veronica getting it. She's freaking playing her fifty lobby and she got it. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, it's not, not the sad thing. You want to hear the about? sad? You want to hear the oh, sad? The- the yeah. sad story yeah. about yeah. that. What? Because you know Ralph has been trying so every hard every day, every, every day. day. Yep. So I just finished up the Act One bounties, right? Yep. I saw him log on. He's like, "Dude, I just finished. You want to come in and c- collect the cash?" And he's like, "Yeah, thanks." And then I got the ring. Oh, I, like, oh. I bet he was pissed. <laughs> See, Ralph's like, always oh, helping everybody out, but it never helps him. Yeah, I know. I but I pulled him. I was like, maybe this is the time. I pull him in. He doesn't have to do anything. He just gets the cash, and that cracks me up. Yeah, it's, That's pretty it's funny. Sad. All right, last question of the night. Uh, this is from Paul Bristow. It says, uh, if you could upload any skill matrix style or upload any skill matrix style, mm. what would it be? Like you know, downloading Kung Fu the way Keanu Reeves did. Uh, um, 
Man, what would you do, Brian? I, 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 uh, guitar. I would I would love to learn like to be a guitar virtuoso yeah. and get that immediately and not have to go through all of the the calluses and the uh and the years of <laughs> training. progression and the sure. practice exactly. Just give me that whoop. All yep. right. Yep. I wouldn't mind that in music. Um for me it would probably be uh an extreme competence in in programming languages. Just like all those core constructs, what? just be able to know it all like immediately and understand any language that was put in front of me. Because they all kind of are the same in um, in most ways. They're just small differences. Right. And I've noticed that people are really proficient, can move to language, to language, to language without any trouble. I want to be that guy and I want to program stuff fast and just prototype games. And I would just love that. So, yeah, for me, it'd be programming. How about you, Eric? I would always I would love to be able to just download <clears throat> excuse me the knowledge of like being a, an amazing like 3D art, artist. Oh yeah, like somebody who knows Maya like up just, and down. Yeah, and, just yeah. like, you know, like Blizzard quality stuff, dude, just like the, the you know the lighting and the textures. Oh and, yeah. It's good. Yeah, like the 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 guys on that cinema, cinematic team, the way they are, that they spend yeah. half, half you know 20 years of their life doing nothing about that. I'd like to just know that like now. Exactly. Actually, let's combine it all. We'll do okay. I can program the game. You can make the 3D models. Brian can score it. I'll, I'll score it. Sure. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. It'll be called Three Dots, and no one can no one can sue us. All right, great. Uh, the that's 3D it. Guitar Hero. Dots. Exactly. Dots. <laughs> Uh, that's it for your Twitter questions. Again, all week we'll be taking them. There's a bunch more, but uh, we'll, and we'll keep ones we haven't done this week. But uh, they are uh, over there at uh, Twitter, Twitter.com, and then just use the hashtag, uh, hashtag TMS questions. That's it. Eric, it's really fun having you on again, man. Well, thanks for having me. It's been a while. It has been. Um, it sucks that you're not be able to come to N14. I know, I know. I wish I could make it. I know. Then, you know, I just... Uh... I was gone for eight days, and now I'm going to be back in L.A., so I, I was trying to finagle it, but I just can't make it It's work. hard to justify. It's totally fine because there's always the future. There's uh, always next year. Right, and we'll be thinking about you. He's one of the family. Uh, do you have anything else to pimp or talk about or push before we cut you off? <laughs> no, not really. Not really? <laughs> if you want to buy my album, but everybody's probably already knows about it. Yeah. If you don't, it's Function. There's, that's there. You can also get the remix. Uh, what's it called? I forgot already. Crap. Remix of what? No, the second thing he did. Was it just Function? Oh, sh Shattered? Shattered, that's it. Shattered. Hmm. And also, I'm going to release the Diablo 3 song that Scott plays, but I'm just waiting for some cover art from him. Oh, but shite. Yeah, I promised that a while ago. He's been dragging his feet. But... Yeah, that's unusual for me. I know. Can and you I, believe it? I mean, <laughs> kind of is, actually. I'm loving that avatar you said you're going to get for me. And here's, here's a taste of it. This is the song I play on the Diablo show a lot. It's epic, man. Wow. Eric makes really epic stuff, so God, yeah. check it out. Uh, Eric Van Skyhawk, he is Hakito on Twitter. Eric, thanks a lot, man. Have a great night. Thank you. Get some New York sleep. Meep, meep, meep. Okay. Well, Brian? What is New York sleep? What, even, what's the know. definition of that? I don't know. I made it up. Okay. All right. I made it up. I'm going to read you a bad review of Transformers. <laughs> okay. All right. I think we found like Transformers. Um, <laughs> this is from Tom Long, Detroit it's News. Huge! It's wicked big. I don't think this is a regular truck. I think it's a transformer. <laughs> well, <laughs> you do that. You do that way too well. Well, finally, I got a voice I can do that stands the test of the Brian Emmett's amazing stable of voices. <laughs> All right, here you go. Tom Long of the Detroit News says, "Seriously, this movie should just be called Transformers: Hammer to the Skull." Uh, <laughs> Joe Williams says, in an homage to such cinema of cruelty classics as Andy Warhol's Real Time Sleep, Bay should or Bay allows the film to run almost almost over three hours and abandons all pretense of a plot. Uh, wow. The final confrontation lasts close to an hour, and at some point you may find yourself simply in a daze, unable to absorb any further action into your brain. Uh let's, let's see anything else. Um Except for Tucci, the humans possess less personality than the robots as they race from one ridiculous mounted action scene to another. Well, that's too bad. Yeah. Aww. Aww. This is a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be transformed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, there you go. We're done. We're done. Thank you, everybody, for being here. It's uh, great to do the Thursday night thing. It's uh, patreon.com slash TMS where you can support us and keep this going. 
Uh, we will not be back next week because all week is nerdtacular. Planning, travel, and having week. And, uh, and having. And having. <laughs> That's not entirely true. You'll get a Friday episode. It won't be probably uploaded until we get back. So I think what will happen is the Nerdtacular episode will air Monday on the feed. But you can watch it live when it's mm-hmm. happening, Friday at 1030 Mountain Time. Uh, that's Friday the 4th, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, 4th of July. Yeah, Friday the 4th. Yeah, yeah and if a lot of you have that off work, you can watch it at home, whatever. Um, 10.30 a.m. And then we have a live film sack the following day at the same time. Or I think that's at 10. Saturday, right. Or Saturday, right. Saturday's film sack, yeah. And then Brian will be doing awesome work as always on the all-star competition all through the day, uh, both days. And really excited about that. It's going to go great. Oh, me too. Boy, uh, the... Um the reading of the rules mm. uh gonna the be video special, huh? guest yes is gonna be <laughs> i have no idea you haven't told me so I, no no this is all you... gonna be a surprise to me yeah, only wait. one person besides uh, tina and tristan there's only one person out there who knows really um yeah wow and probably the person who's doing it no no oh. uh, well okay i take that back then there are three people to know. <laughs> <laughs> and tristan's coming this year i heard late breaking news coming yep, okay yep Great. so he, he and Carter will be up there flipping the uh uh, flipping the the, the bird. sign, oh, the, to, sign. Yeah. <laughs> the bird, <laughs> <laughs> keeping score. There we go for for all stars. Good, that's the tradition. It's fun. If if Kurt is still up for it, oh, she won't. She's dying to. She was planning cool. on it either way, and I said, I'm sure Brian has has that all worked out. So, um, they're both Good. 17 now. It's they're, they're growing up. These scorekeepers. Um, yeah, that'll be fun. So please do tune in. Check all that out. Uh, sorry mm-hmm. for the lack of shows next week, but that is the way Nerdtacular rolls. It's just the yeah. way it goes. Yeah. Uh, that's going to do it for us. Frogpants.com slash TMS is our website. Email us themorningstream at gmail.com on Twitter. Follow us at, uh, at morningstream, at Scott Johnson, at cover, <coughs> Coverville. I can't get to anything without choking or oh, saying it. Uh, that'll do it. I guess that's it. Okay. Uh, what was there something else? Oh, there was a new film sack yesterday. So yes, go check yeah. that out. Um, that was for the day of the dead and things like this happened. What the hell are you talking about? Frankenstein like that. Like that, that's pretty good, right? How about, I'm right like this end of this monkey farm. How about this one? Biggest piece of meat in the cave. Right, right. Biggest pe- piece of meat in the cave. Yeah. And what all the girls in high school call Brian. Something called beef treat. See? <laughs> sure, that's fine. All yeah, right. It's, uh, you'll that's, take it. That's one of the less, uh, uh, less unsavory <laughs> things that has been said about me during uh during your high school career all right right no during my during film sack oh during film sack yes <laughs> yes uh all right so there you go that's fun i, I think that's probably it i know just we're not gonna have a chance to talk to everybody so my brain's racking trying to find other things but i guess that's it just keep an eye on us on twitter uh, both the official feed and our and our names and uh, you can follow everything that's going on next week lots of tadpoolers are going to be there it's going to be awesome all right brian let's play music all right, this one is going out to Don and Tw- uh, Tyler Kwan. Hi, I'm sending this request in early to be sure it gets to the right mailbox and give some give Brian some time to do some research. The actual request for the show is below. I guess I didn't need to read any of that. Good morning, guys. Uh, our request is in celebration of us. We're celebrating our 10th wedding anniversary on June 26th. One thing we share is listening to Frog Pants podcast together. We've been Coverville citizens forever and listen to all episodes together. We love watching the best bad movies and laughing with the Sackers. We found some new TV shows with autopilot and we listen to TMS and laugh at Scott's latest neuroses or Brian's cool music selection. Jeez, a- that's a terrible comparison. That- <laughs> Yours sounds so much better. You get neuroses. I get cool music selections. Jeez. All right. Fine. Woo. Fine. I see how it is. Keep going. Uh, they even made a pilgrimage to Nerdtacular 2011. We're proof that the famous old saying really is true. Couples that frog pants together stay together. Uh, our song is Paradise by the Bodines. In the unlikely event Brian has a cover of this song, we'd love to hear it. If not, maybe a cover of or by one of our other favorites, No Eye Rolling Brian, The Alarm, Brian Adams, or another Bodine song. Thanks, and as always, love the show, though. Don and Tyler Kwan oh. from the sweetheart city of Loveland, Colorado, Brian's neighbors to the north in the only time zone that matters. Sweet. I agree with that. Uh, yes, I. as soon as I saw their email, I knew that all other... Artists would have to go by the wayside and I would have to go with something from Brian Adams. So that is exactly what we're going to do. A cover of Brian Adams' Run to You. This 
is epic. This this thing shakes it up so much that it's almost unrecognizable. But then the lyrics kick in. It's like, oh, my God, that's Run to You by Brian Adams. Um, this is performed by James B.'s Royal Jelly Orchestra from the 1996 album Cocktail Shaken and Stirred. It's Brian Adams' Run to You. All right. We'll be back next week with one show and then other things. So stay tuned for all of that. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. We appreciate all your support, and we'll see you then. She says her love for me could never die But that'd change if she ever found out about you and I Oh, but her love is cold Wouldn't hurt her if she didn't know Cause when it gets too much I need to feel your touch I'm gonna run to you I'm gonna run to you Cause when the feeling is right I'm gonna run all night I'm gonna run to you She's got a heart of gold she never let me down You're the one who always turns me on You keep me coming around I know that her love is true But it's so damn easy making love to you I got my mind made up I need to feel your touch I'm going I park my car. Oh no. Always good one. Never a bad one. No, never bad. That's fantastic. That was good, man. Mm-hmm. What a cool uh cool cover that was. I dug it. It's not even recognizable hardly. I no, know you, I know you like saying. those too, right? Yeah, I totally love those. Yeah. White guy style. Yeah, you ready? Exactly. <laughs> Let's see. We're gonna kill all that because we did that already. White guy style. Kyle, you ready? Okay, great. Tonight on TN. Great. Tonight on. Okay. All right, we're done. We got okay. it. Okay. Thanks, okay. man. Okay. Uh, all right. If you need me at all, just let me know. Hey, did uh, uh, did Verinda do some artwork? No, not yet. Okay. 
talked to I him. need to hit him up for it too because uh, I talked to him a little bit. I think he should, I think I think he says he's going to do it. Okay, I'll hit him up. I'll, I'll let him know what's at, what's at stake because uh, um, this album is going to San Diego Comic Con. Whoa, that's cool. Yeah, not with me, but uh, that's a big and deal. That actually, yeah, and it's going to get a custom Comic Con envelope that you can only get at Comic Con. Who's going to? Who is is? What's his name taking it? Um, your boy, uh, Andrew. <laughs> No, no, a guy named a listener of the show named Topher. Oh, that's even. Oh, I know Topher. He's cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, he's yeah. going. He's a cryptozoic guy, right? Oh, is he? No, I don't think he is. Oh, different Topher. Might be though. a different guy. Yeah. Oh, maybe I've talked to two different. You might be. Tophers. You might be talking to a lot of different Tophers. Seventy show Topher? No. The O show. The <laughs> Topher Grace. Okay, no, not him. All right. No, uh, no. I don't know any no. more Tophers. So. <laughs> and Doza. Tophers. Uh, <laughs> excellent. Tophers pizza. No. To- ooh. So Stouffer's is what you're thinking of. Yeah, yeah, it's on. That's yeah. all right. That sounds pretty good, but I don't eat pizza. That so was, That uh, was the joke. It's kind of depressing, joke. yeah. All right, have a great day. And you and you I too, will sir. hook up later. No film sack this weekend. Though, oh, my so. God, I know. It's. It, imagine we'll talk between now and yeah, it seems uh, like Wednesday a guarantee, or Thursday. Yeah. Are you going to be up at Snowbird Wednesday, or are you guys getting up there Thursday? Thursday morning we'll okay, be there. Cool. So we, we'll see you Thursday morning. Yeah, you'll be there Wednesday night? Is that your mm-hmm. plan? Okay. Yeah, Wednesday afternoon. Yep. So you'll see, you'll see Patrick there. We'll see Patrick. We'll see... Um, Cleo, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. Uh, a, a lot of people of get there early. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think uh, I think Nicole's there Wednesday. Mm, so okay. She might be there cool. as well. Yeah. Anyway, uh, one way or the other, though. I may. I, who knows? I may. I know we're not staying there until Thursday, but right. I may be up right. early. Who knows? Sure. Yeah, either All way, right. I'm excited. Well, you and I'll talk between now and then. Anyway. If you need me, you know where to find me. 